So this is just a quick test with geometry nodes to uh, see how they work. I am by no means an expert on them yet. I just played with them briefly and I'm sharing uh, the results. So I'm going to just close this and uh, let's start by clearing the scene. Um, and I'm actually going to start with uh, model menu, geometry tab. I'm going to get a one meter cube up and I'm going to have that be half a meter above the ground so it rests on the ground. And we're also going to bring up a, a sphere and I'm going to have that be about a meter above ground. I'm also going to hit F4 uh, to split the view. And I'm going to, in this view, I'm going to set up the camera view. In this view, I'm going to set up perspective view so we see what's happening. Uh, I'm also going to, you know, overlap the sphere a bit, make it a little bit bigger just so that we kind of see everything um, a little bit better. The first time I tried to do the geo nodes, I tried to actually get it applied to the mesh, which makes no sense. And of course it didn't work. Um, so what I need to do next is to create a null control and command N on, a, on the Mac. So here's our null. I'm going to hit P for properties. There's also the properties button is down here. Make sure you're in the primitive geometry tab. And uh, from the add modifier pop-up, you want procedural geometry. And it usually shows up at the top of the modifier stack. And I'd, I'd say that's a good place for it to be, unless of course, um, I haven't really started to work this with more complex animation things that I have, but you know, obviously there may be instances in which you may want to apply that after other things. Um, now, right now it looks like it's doubled up, but that's because if I double click on this, you'll see there's already a geometry node plugged in there. So what I want to get is from mesh, um, not mesh volume, because that would be for VDBs, but from mesh. And I'm going to copy and paste that. And then I'm just going to do a boo for a Boolean. Now the way these plug in, is the Boolean goes into geometry and the result of that geometry goes into output for procedural geometry. I'm going to set this to the cube. I'm going to set this to the sphere. That's think of it as the hole cutter. And, and so now if I come into my Boolean, I mean, there's union, intersection, and subtraction, except for I don't see anything. Let me just move something over on my other screen. So why is that? Because obviously the, the mesh geometry is hiding it. So I'm going to get the scene editor up. I'm going to select the cube, set that to hidden, select the sphere and set that to hidden. So now we actually see what's going on. And I'm going to drop this ball to, I don't know, somewhere around here. Maybe we'll make it a, a little bigger also. And then on frame 30, I'm going to raise it a bit. So we have this sort of animation. So let's play back the animation. So that's good. Now, let's say I want to apply a procedural. So one of the things I tried to do was to apply the procedural with the displacement map to the sphere. And that gave me an error message. So let me turn this on so you can see what the issue with that is and how I was able to resolve it. So you kind of move this, you'll get the intersection failed. So I'm going to come back to the sphere, turn off the old displacement map modifier, and instead use the um, nodal displacement. So with that, I'm going to grab first a scalar layer and also the scale. And in this case, you want the vector math scale. And so the normal goes into there, scale into scale, and I'll just use a, I don't know, something like underwater. But so notice what happens here is like we almost see nothing. I mean, that can be cool too, but the reason is because the texture value is too high. So if I set this to something lower, like 0.1, I think we see the rippling a little bit better. 
And so the next thing I want to do is to take a look at textures. So for the textures, um, now if I set up textures on the meshes, it, it really doesn't do anything. I mean, it does, except for we have it hidden. You'll probably see it in this. Um, so that you're going to see it in that. So what we want to do is not to actually use that. And um, you're going to have to set up the textures under null. Notice it created the, the mesh surface names in the procedural geometry for the null. So here we'll set the cube to, I don't know, like red, and the sphere to I don't know, blue. And now you can see that effect, except for if I come to VPR, you're going to see this. Once again, we hid the mesh from layout, but not the render. So I'm going to grab the cube come into the raw render tab and set it to unseen by camera. Do the same thing for the sphere. And so now it still looks really dark. And the reason is we're getting the shadows now with, um, you know, native, you can, of course, turn these off. And, but, you know, with octane, you really can't. And actually before I go to octane, something else that I'm going to do is actually turn the null into a sub patch. And that's kind of showing you what we're getting in terms of it being sub patched. And I, I maybe something else that I'll do in the interest of whatever. <laughs> A uh, cool factor, I guess, is to, um, let me just go up to point two on the procedural. Yeah. Just so we get more unusual results. So with Lightwave, you can sort of turn off the shadows, blah, 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 blah. But that's not going to work with Octane. So um, that's not going to work with Octane. So I'm going to enable Octane get the nodal render up, right click on the render target, set default and select this environment daylight node and hit delete to get rid of it. And we'll just work with texture environment. And I'm actually going to pause while I look for um, an HDR. Okay. So I grabbed this uh, HDR. There it is. I mean, you know, we don't have a whole lot happening here. I mean, actually, I should switch that. Okay, so here's like uh, another HDR. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is to see what happens when we set up the uh, octane texture. So uh, I'm just going to put a universal on the cube and set it to, I guess, blue and get the IPR up. I had it up. It was just covered up. <laughs> okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, copy the cube, paste it into the sphere, set it to a different color. Um, and so that's basically what we have. Now, another thing that's happening, by the way, is that the meshes are also well first of all this is this is just a warning that this happens with octane it's just this weird artifact thing it'll go away if you render again or refresh the ipr so just be forewarned you're going to get that weird thing whatever that weird thing is and um the the other thing is that i'm gonna actually switch to my top view here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the null and, you know, move it over and move the camera over. So you, you, we're not getting that geometry sitting on top. And there you have it. But be forewarned that you're going to get, when you scrub, etc., you're going to get that weird artifacting. And so, 
Yeah, see that there's the art of acting. Now, a lot of times if I just do a redraw or, uh, you know, full update, you know, it, it doesn't get rid of it. Oh, it does. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. I've, I just kind of close and reopen the IPR. I've done that and it works. So there it is um, with a ground plane. And, and once again, there's that weird artifacting and it goes away. Just ignore that weird artifacting. And just so that you can see what the surfaces are. It's just a basic for the cube. I'm using two universals, octane material mixer, dirt node, and those amounts. So, and the, and the two colors are really just the light and the dark. Uh, yeah. There. And on the sphere, same thing. Uh, this lighter color and this darker one. So that's where that stuff is coming from. And there you have it. So there's just a animated Boolean with a displacement and octane and you know, the, the various issues that come up and how to resolve them. And just a, another note in this scene is that I made sure that, um, uh, I made sure that the null is, uh, over here away from the geometry that was used to generate that stuff. So I'm not getting basically any shadows. Uh, from the geometry because you would and with octane there's some way to turn them off so you know you don't have to move things over um, I have it setting it to unseen by camera would not get rid of the shadow you can use object dissolve I have but the problem is octane doesn't always like object dissolve so well it kind of does if you don't animate object dissolve when I animate object dissolve it doesn't always work as well um, so that's it. That's just so far what I've discovered with the geometry nodes in 2023.